In communities all over South Florida this week, cars lined up for miles and people waited for hours to get boxes and bags of free food. And a leader in those efforts to feed South Florida is Feeding South Florida, a veteran nonprofit that is distributing food to the hungry long before coronavirus. Paco Velez is the president, CEO of Feeding South Florida. Paco, good morning. Great to see you and thank you for the work that you and your staff and your volunteers are doing. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Uh, Paco, let me ask you something. I have been really moved on a number of occasions by watching our reports uh, as people go through the lines and people in those lines, many of them have said to our reporters, other reporters, I have never asked for free food in my life. I just so desperate. I've got to be here. When you hear that, what, what do you think? Um, it's, it's truly heartbreaking uh, to see the families, the, the children, the seniors come through the line. And yes, you're absolutely correct. Many of those are asking for assistance for the very first time in their lives. And, and there's, a, there's truly a sense of desperation um, and, and of fear. Uh, our families are, are fearful of, of the unknown, the unknown of, of when they're going to get their next meal, of when is it going to be over, or if they're even going to get another job. So, so the, the, hopefully we can do our part to make sure that they have food on their table. Paco, you said something this week uh, during some news reports that as we watch exactly what your organization is doing, video of lines of people showing up to get what they need, you said something, uh, and I don't want to direct quote you, but it was something along the lines of depending on how long the pandemic drags on, you said, we will run out of food. I, I can't think of more unsettling words to so many people in our community now kind of frame for us what that issue is for you and what can be done about that. So the we're we're fortunate. A lot of people see South Florida from Palm Beach down to Miami as as a destination spot and a paradise and, and a place for nightlife and, and uh, entertainment. A lot of people don't see the the other side, the agricultural side. We have a huge agricultural industry from Palm Beach, Broward and Miami Dade. And, and Feeding South Florida rescues millions upon millions of pounds of food every single year from, from these generous growers across the three county area. The unfortunate piece is, is that our growers are gonna head up north to get to the cooler weather and we're gonna lose out on, on all of that produce that's, that's currently coming in from our, from our growers. Uh, the second piece of that is our supply chain and the food system has, has, has been impacted not just locally or across the country, but across the globe. Everybody's trying to access food so they can fill their, their retail markets. Um, if you go to any retail store, you'll see bare shelves. I'm sure you guys have reported on that uh, many times. And, uh, and you have all these retail stores, as well as 200 food banks across the country, as well as all these different organizations around the world trying to access the same food. There's a t uh, three to five week lead time on all the product that we're trying to purchase from manufacturers. And, and um, as we're waiting for that food, we're, there's, a, there's a possibility that uh, because of the immense need that we will run out. Yeah. Uh, Paco, w earlier, maybe you heard the interview with uh, Congresswoman Debbie Mooker Salpel. She talked about how she had been instrumental in getting the USDA to fund $3 billion so that those big produce growers uh, in South Florida and elsewhere in the country, you know, get some money for their crops, which otherwise they were going to have to give away. How about money for feeding South Florida? Are you getting any federal or state or local grant money? So we've received uh, our, our typical TFAP commodity program, which is the Emergency Food Assistance Program through the United States Department of Agriculture and down through the Florida Department of Agriculture. It's a pass-through grant. Um, and that helps us for, for a period um, in Palm Beach County and Broward County. Uh, we've also uh, received uh, some money to work with growers from Miami-Dade County. But the reality is, if we're going to get, if we're gonna get through this, we're going to... We're requesting the support of our entire community, those that, that are fortunate enough to still have employment and still have uh, revenue coming in or a paycheck coming in, that if they can help, that would be amazing for us. We're going to have to rely on our private community and our private donations in order to get through this together. Yeah, Paco, if I could, uh, here's an opportunity to pitch the public. All of our viewers through This Week in South Florida are generous people, very engaged in their community, and I suspect some of them would like to support you. How do they get in touch with you? How would they make a contribution? 
all of South Florida has been extremely generous, uh, whether it's after a hurricane or after the government or during the government shutdown. South Florida has always come out to volunteer to support us financially and to, and to provide food. The best way for, for families and, and organizations to get involved is to go to feedingsouthflorida.org, click the Donate Now button. We're limited on the, the amount of volunteers that we can bring in, so we have to rely on, on our staff and, and our increased staff. We've, we've hired additional staff. We've rented additional trucks in order to try to meet the demand. And in order for us to get food in, we need those funds in order to, 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 to put fuel in our trucks, to, to get those uh, reefer units going, and, and to transport the product from where it is to where it needs to go onto the tables of families. Paco, I, I want to ask you what, what may be a, a bit of a difficult question. I was one of those reporters out there watching people wait online for food and the compassionate and gen generous acts of all of these, yours and the organizations that are doing this. And what goes into a trunk is a box of some fresh food and maybe milk, orange juice, uh, maybe some meat. And I can't imagine that that box would last more than a day or two for a family. You are a frontliner. Talk about that, if you would. So we get the question all the time. It must be truly rewarding to, to do what you do. And the reality is um, the smiles on people's faces as soon as they get a box of food last about two and a half seconds. Um, our families are truly struggling. And, and they'll have to be back to another distribution or that same distribution the following week in order to continue to, to, to feed their families. And one of the things I've shared with folks is those that still have paychecks can go to a grocery store, and if there's no food on the shelves at the grocery store, they can go to a different grocery store or wait a couple of days uh, till the grocery store replenishes their, their uh, inventory. If Feeding South Florida runs out of food, our families just don't eat, and that's a reality because they have no, no, no income coming in. Um, our families are, they do get a generous amount of food. We do get a lot of great produce from our, from our growers, and we do put in enough food, cereals, and, 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 and meats in their box to last them about a week, um, and hopefully until the next distribution. Paco Velez from Feeding South Florida, we are so appreciative of the work that you, your staff, and your volunteers do. Keep it up. Thank you. And up next, we